Okay, we want to take this random made up equation and we want to rewrite this as a sinusoid of the form y equals a sine of bx plus c. Okay, that's like standard form for a sine graph that lets us know like what transformations are going on. Okay, and what we basically need to do is come up with a way to figure out what a, b, and c are to plug into this formula. And here's how we're going to do that is notice that these are two things being added together. And since this section is entitled the sum and difference identities, let's use the sine sum identity to write to rewrite sine of bx plus c. Okay, so a sine of bx plus c equals, okay, we're going to put an A and we're going to put parentheses because we're really just using the sine BX plus C, not the A, the A needs to go in front, okay, and then sine of BX plus C, I would write as sine of BX cosine of C plus cosine of BX sine of C, okay. So hopefully we all understand what, what I just did there with the, the sum identity for sine. Now let's uh, go ahead and distribute the A. And then let's look at what we have to start off with on our problem. We have 4 cosine 2x plus 7 sine 2x. Okay, well, let's look at what I have here. I have sine of bx. And if we remember that this right here is, is like our cosine of bx. And this here is sine of bx. So let's take this and say this is going to match up with this. Okay. And so to make it match up properly, let's let's rewrite this. Sine of bx is at the end of this. Let's move the cosine c in front. Okay, so that this is a cosine c and then sine of bx. Okay, and let's do the same thing on this. Let's make the sine c be in front. That was supposed to be sine. No. Okay. This equals the problem we started with for cosine. Well, actually, let's rewrite it because the sine comes first down here and the cosine comes second. Let's write it that way. Let's say that this is uh, 7 sine of 2x plus 4 cosine of 2x. Okay, and so hopefully you, you followed me getting to here and distributing the a. And then if you don't understand why I rearranged it the way I did, that's okay. If you can memorize this part that I'm about to underline in green, if you can memorize this, you can get the whole rest of the problem. Okay, this is the most, like, pretty much the most important thing, uh, in my opinion, to this problem. Okay, because what it's saying is that the coefficient in front of sine of bx is a cosine c. And if I look over here, the coefficient in front of sine 2x is 7. So if these two things really are equal, that means that 7 equals a cosine c. Okay, because what's in front of sine here has to equal what's in front of sine here. In the same way, what's in front of cosine here has to equal what's in front of cosine here. So that means that I have 4 equals a sine c. Now, we're trying to find a, b, and c, and both of these have a's and c's. We need to, but what we can do is really easily say what b is, because back when we were talking about sinusoids, we said... If these both have the same thing in front of x, it's a sinusoid, and that sinusoid will have this number, okay, in front of its x. So b, we could have said all along, is 2, because b is just whatever is in front of your x's. It has to be the same thing 
on these problems and it will be like they're not going to try to trip you up and give you two different things um, so now we are ready to try to find a okay and here's the here there's a couple different ways of thinking of this idea uh, and the way I think is actually easier is that let's let's solve this for cosine C so to do that I would divide both sides by a and get cosine C equals 7 over a and let's do the same thing on this I would get 4 over a equals sine C and let's think about a right triangle okay and let's think about a right triangle that has an angle C well if cosine of C is 7 over a that means the adjacent side is 7 and the hypotenuse is a and at the same time we're saying that sine of C is 4 over a well that means the opposite side is 4 and the hypotenuse is a here's the opposite side from C and I already had that labeled hopefully we can all tell how to find the third side of a right triangle we would use the Pythagorean theorem and say this is 7 squared plus 4 squared and take the square root okay 7 squared plus 4 squared is 65 so this is the square root of 65 that's what a equals and it actually equals uh, plus or minus square root of 65 but we're just going um, to use the positive just because we can we can basically pick which a we want to use so let's just pick the positive the other way of doing it is to uh, look back at what we have here I believe oh that ba well what we have here is that I can if I wanted to say you know for whatever reason I want to say that 7 squared plus 4 squared equals and then on the other side I would put a cosine c squared plus a sine sine c squared okay so the reason I would do this is because I'm trying to figure out what a is and if I can introduce uh, some cosine squareds and sine squareds and maybe I have an identity that I can use that will help this all work out so you know you should be able to see hey that 7 squared plus 4 squared has to equal the other side of their equation squared so if I finish this out I get 65 on the left side this squared distributes and gives me a squared cosine squared C and then a squared sine squared C and then I would factor out the a squared and get cosine squared plus sine squared and then hang on a second isn't isn't this right here isn't this like a, a really awesome identity uh, that equals 1 and so that gives me 65 equals 1 a squared which is just a squared so I take the square root of each side and I get that because I took the square root okay in an equation and I get plus or minus square root of 65 equals a so it's hard to see with the, doing it this way like why would it be plus or minus but if we look at it this way that's why because we can really set up an equation where we end up taking the square root of both sides and we end up with plus or minus so it's like this one's giving us one one type of solution but this is giving this us the option of two different solutions so now if we know what a is and we know what b is uh, all we have left to find is c so let's go back to uh, one of these formulas up here either the one with the 7 or the one with the 4 it doesn't really matter which one because either one will give me C so let's pick the first one let's say that uh, 7 equals and remember I'm just going to use the positive on this the the positive square root of 65 for a cosine C how do I solve this for C well let's divide by the square root of 65 Okay, and then we're going to take the inverse cosine of each side to get rid of the cosine on the right side. So the inverse cosine of 7 over square root of 65 equals C, because I was solving for C. 
Okay, so now I have A, B, and C. Okay, we said B is 2. We said A is going to be, you know, positive square root of 65. And then C is this that doesn't really look pretty, but this is an exact value. If we plug it into the calculator and we get a rounded value, that's no fun. Um, so let's plug this into what we originally said, A sine of BX plus C. So this would be, and actually when we do this, uh, never mind, forget I said that. So this should be Y equals the square root of 65, uh, and then sine of B, which is 2, X plus our C, which was the inverse cosine of 7 over the square root of 65. Okay, and that's that's how we do it. So if you if you practice this, um, you will go far in life, or you'll go far on this problem.